Okay, we're ready to start tying. So I'm just gonna cut a small piece of tubing. I'm gonna slide it on my adapter and then just push down till it's nice and snug and not going to roll on me after I start wrapping my thread. Insert your adapter into your vise and tighten. There are different threads on the market. There are round threads and there are flat threads. I prefer to use a flat thread just because I feel like if the stem is round, round and round tend to roll. Flat thread just helps me to really lock in my fibers. Choose any color. Remember, if you don't like the color of your thread, you can always just use a Sharpie to change the color at the end of your fly. A trick that I like to do on more complex flies is to use a light color thread like a tan, cream, or white. Then just take a fine point marker and mark off your proportions. Save yourself the hassle of scissors. Just take your thread, wrap the tag a couple times around your finger, begin to wrap, remember always away from yourself, and then simply take the thread and pull it like a band-aid. The first step we need to add to our fly is one of volume. Now there are so many different materials on the market that you can use for this step. I personally like to use more natural materials. The synthetic materials can work as well, but they do tend to collapse a little more than the naturals. An excellent material that I tend to use the most of is Arctic Fox. The most important thing to remember is that you're only ever as good as your materials. When it comes to Fox, you have a couple of options. You can either buy the body strips or you can buy the tail. I strongly advise staying away from the zonker or the strips because they don't tend to have the same volume as the tail bits. Now remember, because I like to tie a bunch of one steppers and then stack them together if I need to, I wanna to try to stay away from overdressing my fly. So I'm only gonna use a little bit of fox. Ensuring that you cut down close to the hide, cut yourself a small pinch of fur. We're going to create our volume with this fox by making a dubbing loop. It looks like this. Coming down with your thread, put your finger in about like so, come back up, around, and over on the other side to close off your loop. Now you've got a space to put your fox. Ensuring that you're using the ends rather than the tips, make sure that they're all flush to one another and then slide them all the way up into the top of your dubbing loop. If you are worried about them slipping out, all you need to do is apply a little bit of dubbing wax or chapstick or even just some saliva to give it a little extra stick. Now that the fur is in the loop, take the weight of your dubbing twister and apply it. It will trap those fibers in to that closed loop. Now you wanna splay the fur down as far as you can without having any gaps or silly spaces. The key here is to splay the fur down quite a few inches without having any real obvious gaps or spaces. Rather than using my scissors to cut the edge, I'm just gonna take the edge of my hand and do a bit of a karate chop till the edges are aligned and in about a quarter to half of an inch. Rather than tie a specific pattern right now, I'm just going to tie a very basic one-stepper. You can use any color that you'd like. I'm gonna use colors that really stand out just for instructional purposes. At this point now, I'm just going to take my dubbing twister and start to spin. You'll notice that your fur may start to look a little bit bunchy. Don't panic. Use a bodkin or a safety pin and just simply pick out any of the trapped fur. Give it a few more spins. Don't spin too much because you can break your thread. Once the thread has wound all the way up to the tube, I just take my bodkin one more time and pick out any of the trapped fibers. From here, using a gun cleaner or some sort of similar tool, you can use a toothbrush, you can really use anything. I'm just gonna go ahead and brush vigorously. The whole goal is to have any of the loose stuff come out. The last thing we wanna do is overdress our fly or have too much material in it. If you can see your thread through your dubbing, that's a great indication that you haven't overdressed your fly so far. There are a lot of different dubbing twisters on the market. I do like to have a weighted one. It really helps to pull the loop together. If you have one of these long weighted dubbing twisters, 
feel free to just go ahead and cut your dubbing loop off and then continue to wrap either with hackle pliers or simply your fingers. Wrap your thread forward until it's out of the way, then take your dubbing loop and do the same. It's important to always pull back as you wrap forward, like this. If you wrap back, you'll see that we can actually expose the thread so that we're not wrapping over top of fibers as we palmer it forward. As we wrap forward, I'm gonna pull back, wrap forward, pull back, ensuring that every wrap is side by side. From here, if you have any excess thread, just unwrap and then tie yourself off. No more than three wraps of thread per step. It's really important at this point to take your bodkin or your pin and just pick out any of the trapped fibers. Remember the whole goal with this step is not to suck in water, but to achieve volume. A quick trick just to add a little more volume and a little bit of sheen and glimmer is just to take a small pinch of your choice of dub. You can really use any of the dubbing that's on the market and it's a very simple tie-in, just like this. All you're gonna do here is you're gonna take this midpoint, put it where your last tie-off was, hold it down, give yourself one, wrap a thread just to secure the fibers, and then simply take the material that's protruding out the front, split it in half, fold it down, around, and under, and proceed with your three thread wraps. At this point, we're gonna add an overlaying material. We're doing this for length. There are different materials on the market that you can use for this step. There's ostrich, there's rhea, there's bleach burnt ostrich, there's rubber legs and marabou, and well, there, the list goes on. I prefer Rhea for a multitude of reasons, which I'll explain in another video. For ease and durability, I'm gonna simply stack the Rhea in. Grab your Rhea and cut off, say, seven to 10 fibers, nice and close to the stem. From here, bunch the edges, grab the lengthy part of the tips, and pull out any of the little guys. Now I'm gonna put in four different stacks of the Rhea. I'm gonna put in one on the top, one on the bottom, one on the left, and one on the right. It looks like this. Rather than just tying in a big clump, we really wanna make sure that we space it out. So I'm gonna use my thumbs to shuffle back and forth. What that's now done is it's spread out the material so it's no longer in one big clump. From here, I'm gonna give myself three wraps. We're going to proceed on the bottom, the left, and the right. Just as a side note, there are a couple things you should ask yourself. Are you trying to tie this fly really small? If you are, you don't need to utilize the entire length of the rhea. You could just tie it in short like this. Because I much prefer to tie my rhea in lengthy and then decide whether I'm gonna cut it back later, I just tie all of my flies with the rhea as long as I can and then if I get on the river and decide that I want it to be shorter, I simply break the ends off with my fingers. Again, I'm gonna put the clump in, I'm gonna use my thumbs to shuffle back and forth, splaying out the rhea, and then I'm going to finish that with three thread wraps. One of the advantages to stacking is that you can change the colors up. Now, I just wanna show you something quickly on this particular feather. You'll notice that these fibers are really, really long. These are great for a lot of our very large flies. Try to save these for your larger flies and find the fibers on the feather that are shorter and a little more the size of what you're looking for. Now here's your aha moment. If you recall, earlier on I said no more than three wraps of thread per step. One of the problems with stacking in Rhea is that four stacks or four clumps with three wraps of thread equals 12 wraps of thread. That is a lot of thread to be bundled into one small space. Here's how we get around that. Pulling all of your fibers back, just ensure to hold them all tight for just a couple seconds here. Tighten your thread and unwrap 12 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. From here, go ahead and tighten your thread and then rewrap. You got it three times. One, two, 
and 3. Problem solved. Now this is optional. You don't need to add flash into your fly, but I personally would rather put flash in and then choose to simply pick it out if I need to. Just like we did with the flash dub, we're going to take our strands of flash, pinch them in the middle, tie them on in the middle with one wrap, and then simply again take the ends protruding out the front and fold them over, around, like so. At this stage, we're going to cut away all of these pesky rhea ends. We certainly don't want to wrap over them because they create too much bulk. Ideally, for this step, we'd use nail clippers so that we can get nice and tight to the tube. But as you know, in this luxurious environment, <laughs> we don't have nail clippers. So I'm going to go ahead and just use scissors. It helps to just pull all of the fibers back. Another little trick that you can do if you're so inclined is just give them a hit of Zappa Gap or super glue, let it dry till it's hardened, and then come through and cut. But we're gonna keep it simple. We're just gonna use a standard scissor cut. If it makes you feel better to give yourself a little dab of super glue to make sure that none of the fibers fall out or are pulled out, nobody will judge you. The next step is simply for aesthetics. We're gonna go ahead and add a collar onto this fly. For a collar, you can use just about any feather. Guinea, silver pheasant, mallard, teal, godwell, checker, barred wood duck, marabou, ringneck pheasant, just about anything. While I'll be showing you how to use all of those feathers in a separate video, today for instructional purposes, we're gonna use the very simple and popular marabou. There are two kinds of marabou on the market. There's blood quill marabou, and then there's woolly bugger marabou. We want to try to avoid the woolly bugger marabou as it's a little too fluffy. When we're choosing marabou for these sorts of flies, we want to have a stringier marabou like the blood quill. Remember, you're only as good as your material. So pick through the batch and choose the one that you feel is best suitable for your fly. By now you should know that I'm not a big fan of fluff in people, life, or flies. So we're gonna simply grab this fly here and remove all the fluffy parts. Ultimately, what we're looking for are those stringy ends. Grab your feather by the tip, separate yourself a nice clean tie-off point, wet your fingers, and roll the tip so that you can just tie it in right about there. Pointing the tip forward, go ahead and tie it in. One, two, three. From here, hold the stem up and do the following. Using either the water or your saliva, just fold back both the left and right side of the stem until the feathers are meeting in the back. Now you will have this nice clean exposed stem that will make wrapping your feather forward easy. From here, again, always pulling back as you wrap forward. You're gonna pull back Again, making sure that your thread is out of your way. You're gonna pull back. Again, ensuring that you're always pulling back before you wrap forward. You're gonna make sure that that nice clean stem is sitting side by side on itself. If at any stage you're happy with the amount of wraps you have on and you don't wanna proceed or overdress your fly, simply take your thumbnail, come up to the stem, and just peel away any excess. At this stage, you're now safe to tie off your stem. One, two, and three. Clip off the rest of the stem and proceed to the next step. Now at this step of the fly, we could just tie it off and be done. A lot of us as tires prefer to tie in what we call cheeks. This can look like an eye as it would on a bait fish pattern. If you listen to the John McMillan podcast, you'll recall that he did say something along the lines of steelhead lining up how they take a bait fish by looking at the bait fish eye. Maybe it's theory, maybe it's just a matter of fishing with confidence, but I personally do like to tie in something that looks a little bit like an eye. Just makes me feel better about my fishing. Grabbing your feather of choice, you're gonna go ahead and just peel off any of the fibers below the eye. I like to leave a few on, just about like so. Just lean it on the side of your fly and give it a wrap or two to hold it in. Repeat on the other side. Make sure that you're lined up by looking down the front of your fly and seeing that both eyes are aligned. Because this isn't the cheapest feather, it doesn't hurt just to fold your stems back and over to reinforce. 
cut off the stems and we're basically done. Now we're ready to go ahead and whip finish our fly. Because with this particular fly I am going to be adding a cone head, I want to keep my whip finishes or half hitches to a minimum. So I'm only going to do a few and then super glue it and then I'm going to show you how to add on a cone head. Now we're just going to take our fly off. A great way to get the tube off easily is just to take your scissors, this little bit here, and slide it off. Leaving about a millimeter or so, just go ahead, take your scissors, and cut off the excess tubing. Remember to hang on to it because you can tie on it again later. And voila! We have a one-stepper stacker complete. Mm -hmm.